pretty entertaining interview here between Senator Loeffler when she went on Fox and Friends a couple of days ago. Entertaining in the sense of just how completely ridiculous her claims are, saying that Raphael Warnock is some type of radical socialist when he is a neoliberal centrist. And just, yeah, it's very, I mean, but again, if you're, if you're, if you have MAGA brain, if you're only getting your news from places like Fox News and other, you know, conservative corporate media sources, then make, oh, maybe Raphael Warnock is some type of radical socialist when he is far from that. So be very careful where you are getting your information from folks full screen there we go senator good morning to you good morning steve good morning brian and ainsley it's great to have you a senator um, so early voting starts today in georgia it's going to be different though than the general election because there are fewer locations to vote at and as we know now every single election why would you want Again, we shouldn't be voting in person during a fucking pandemic. It should be all voting by mail. I, I mean, what the hell? It's really under the microscope. That's right. Early voting starts today here in Georgia. I'm urging all voters to get out, take President Trump's lead, get out and vote today for David Perdue and Kelly Leffler. The president came here last week and urged... And again, both Leffler, Loeffler, how are they... She pronounces her name, and Purdue had obtained, you know, insider information about the dangers, the impact that the coronavirus is going to have in the U.S., and they used that privileged information to financially benefit themselves. So they they conducted insider training. They don't. Neither one gives a shit about you. All they care, care about is their wealth and power. To exercise their right. And it's vitally important that we do that because Georgia is the firewall to socialism. Oh, we have to fuck, hold the line. Dude, Osaf and Warnock are not socialists. As much as I would love, if that was actually true, they're not. They are neoliberal centrists. They don't support Medicare for all, they don't support a Green New Deal. They support these very small tweaks around the edges that would obviously be improvements over what Loeffler and Purdue are offering and would offer, you know, if re-elected. But don't believe this is just complete fucking bullshit and trying to make, mischaracterize <coughs> Warnock. And it's <coughs> completely disingenuous. And hopefully people are able to see through that. Again, I wish... Warnock and Ossoff were a lot more leftist, progressive, socialist, etc., but that is far from the case. Not just for Georgia, but the entire future of the country rests on these races, and we have to hold the Senate majority. How do you how do, how do Republicans fight in that state? Because this is a well-oiled machine. These Democrats with the mail-in votes. How do you how do you go up against that? <laughs> mail-in voting. <laughs> Helen voting is a well or machine because it, it works. It makes sense. People don't have to go in person during a pandemic to vote. They can vote from their home, mail it in, drop it off at a ballot drop box, etc. Makes a whole lot more sense. Well, Ainsley, we've built a robust organization to make sure that voters have confidence in our elections. And we've called on the Secretary of State to do a signature audit looking back. But looking forward, what we're doing is make sure that we have more signature verification. We're in the courts right now fighting for that. We've also brought in 4,000 additional poll watchers because it's so important that only legal votes are counted. Again, this whole thing about... Biden stealing the election and election fraud is why Biden won has been thrown out in every court case as being completely frivolous. Biden's Biden's trash. Trump's a big piece of dog shit as well. Biden definitely won the election though. He got more votes. He won the electoral college. Lots and lots of copium by these MAGA blowhards. Yeah. Yes, and the legal votes are thrown out. I live here in Washington State, 
because the signature I put on my ballot didn't match up with what they had in file, so I had to fill out this other piece of paperwork so my vote was counted. There are these multiple measures in place to make sure our elections are safe, and the best way to do that is to vote by mail, to have a paper trail, not to use these electronic voting machines, and no matter who's running, you know, the elections are always going to be corrupt in the sense because of how we have money in politics. We want to get clean for elections, get money out of politics, don't allow super PAC special interests to, you know, influence. Let it be the will of the people. Give everybody, you know, a democracy voucher where they can spend, you know, a hundred bucks donating to the campaigns that they want because it'll be all people funded. I mean... Open investigations now into the November 3rd election here in Georgia, including uh, an organization... Yes, and none of those, all these supposed investigations into voter fraud have exposed nothing of substance, and they have been thrown out in courts time after time. It's not a thing. ...by my opponent, Raphael Warnock, and, and Stacey Abrams. So we have to get to the bottom of that. And we've also today called on the Secretary of State to release those new voter registrations names. Uh, voter registration... Even the Secretary of State in Georgia confirmed that, you know, the election there was won by Biden. Week. Voting starts today. We need to understand who is coming in to vote. So we've called on him this morning to release that. And again, voter suppression is always a huge component of Republicans trying to remain in power because they you know, have the viewpoint if they're able to get less people to vote, it benefits them, and they obviously always try to limit, uh, you know, certain certain groups of people, particularly communities of color, from voting because they're more likely to vote for Democrats. So voter suppression, always a huge part of the Republican playbook. Receptive to a fellow Georgian who happens to be a fellow Republican making a request like that, but who knows, it passed already. The president has been very uh, frustrated with him. I kind of laugh at the fact that Hollywood is weighing in. Julie, uh, Julia Marie uh, Dreyfus, and Katzenberg, uh, John Legend, uh, Kerry Washington. Now all of a sudden, Hollywood loves Georgia. Didn't they just call for a boycott of Georgia? <laughs> well, Brian, you heard Chuck Schumer. He said, now we take Georgia, then we change America. Uh, Georgians don't want to be taken by Hollywood or New York or Chuck Schumer. We're fighting for conservative values, American values here. Which are what? Exactly. That's a very amorphous platitude. What are American values? What are conservative values? Trickle down economics. Kelly Loeffler using her position and power as a senator to enrich herself. You know, with that insider information about the coronavirus while hiding it from everybody else. Is that a conservative value? To make sure we support our police, our military, open up our economy, get back to work. The things that Democrats are fighting against. In Very much a, you know, capitalist perspective. Let's get everybody back to work. Fuck the pandemic and people's health. We got to start making money so my stonks don't keep going down. Washington. Democrats have blocked relief time and again for hardworking families. The that's that's not true. The is a bill in the the House that passed. I want to say maybe is it the Heroes Act or something like that. And Mitch McConnell wouldn't hold a vote on it because it actually I think benefited the working class so, somewhat. So it's again just a lot of obfuscation and misdirection and mischaracterization of what's actually going on in the real world. Hollywood's as out of touch as, as the liberals in Washington are. We have to keep fighting for hardworking Georgians to get past this pandemic and deliver relief. That's what David and I have fought for every day this year, and we're going to be fighting for that. So Bullshit. Here, uh, both you and David Perdue did back the Texas lawsuit before the Supreme Court uh, that essentially said states like yours screwed up the election. Uh, we've heard from the president who said that the election was stolen from him, that it was rigged in November. So for the people of Georgia who are thinking about early voting, what can you say to them? They've heard the election was rigged in November, so why vote now? <laughs> well, Steve. Well, Steve, because I think 
you know, this time everything's good and in place and I'll get the votes and ain't going to be nothing weird going on. Big question, because we've built a robust organization to make sure that every legal vote is counted and every illegal vote is thrown out. So what's Which already happened, you dummy. We're in the now that it was right in now. November where it's no longer rigged. <laughs> yeah, Look so at Steve Buse here. Right now asking for better signature verification processes, a bipartisan verification, to have consistent verification county to county, as well as the addition of 4,000 poll watchers. We also have a statewide organization getting out the vote. 1,000 workers going across the state, backed by 40,000 volunteers. If we vote, we will win. If we don't vote, we will lose the country. We are the firewall to socialism. Oh, firewall to socialism, man. We're not doing to support Medicare for all, for fuck's sake. I mean, really? Firewall to socialism. In reference to the neoliberal centrist Raphael Warnock. Again, I would love it if he was some socialist firebrand talking about giving the means of production back to the working class or redistributing, you know, Jeff Bezos' wealth. Or having, you know, a NHS style healthcare system or democracy in the workplace via worker co ops. He's not, he's not that. But again, it's because he is such a little centrist moderate, it wouldn't really make sense to criticize him in that way because he, his ideas are, you know, slightly more appealing than. Lawflers, and she's not even again offering anything of substance in this interview, just lies, mic mischaracterizations, and um, you know, trying to paint herself as some champion of the working people and conservative values when in fact she's just you know, very wealthy, powerful senator who used his pos position as a senator to enrich herself further, and she does not give a shit about you. Unless you're part of the owner capitalist class. In my debate last week, I'm running against the most radically liberal candidate that nope. has ever run for the Senate. Not true. Uh, he By said long that shot. Faith on the police, he refused to renounce socialism. Also he not true. He doesn't support defunding the police. I would love it if he did, and not really. I mean, it, it's becoming more, I think, of less of a political. Uh, you know, weak spot to say you support defunding the police, but he doesn't support that. Shut the fuck up. Push back against this radical agenda of the left, and it's up to Georgia voters to do that. And what radical agenda is that exactly? I would like to hear you speak on actual policy terms instead of these vague platitudes. Senator, yeah, I grew up in South Carolina, and I, you know, I always knew that Georgia was so red. Newt Gingrich was the speaker. He's from Georgia. And I bet if he ran in his district now, today, he wouldn't be able to win. What's, why, when did Georgia turn blue? When did it turn, some are saying purplish, others are saying blue? Well, look at Ainsley. Georgia has grown thanks to our strong conservative policies here in Georgia. Uh, low taxes, low regulation, pro-growth, pro-growth. Pro That's what we stand for. We are a red state, and we're going to show the country <laughs> that Georgia's a red well, state. Well, obviously, you're not, not, Georgia's not that red if you had to get in this runoff election because you didn't get 50% in the general, bud. That's why it's so important that people get out and vote. But we also have to make sure that we follow up on these issues. 250 investigations need to get completed quickly. <laughs> oh, Jesus. But we need people to turn out. If we don't... That's, that's where... That's what she's concerned about right now. When tens of millions of people are out of work, tens of millions of people don't have health care, higher rates of food insecurity, the pandemic is disproportionately killing and impacting communities of color and other marginalized groups, extreme massive amounts of inequality continuing to sky, skyrocket, climate change is an, an existential crisis, and yeah, it's, let's worry about this fucking bullshit allegations that 
the election was stolen from Trump. Get the fuck out of here. Go back to your fucking ivory tower. The future of the country will turn towards socialism. High taxes, big government, socialized medicine. I would love it to turn to fucking socialism so we actually put the needs of the people before fucking profits. Hey, what did she say right before that? Turn towards socialism. High taxes, big government... Again, any socialist would institute a progressive taxation system where the people at the top are paying more than the people at the bottom. Proper socialists would not be for higher taxes on the poor and the working class. They would want probably to cut their taxes and the people at the top to pay more because the people at the top were able to accumulate their wealth by exploiting the working class and they should pay more. Again, she is all for corporate socialism, socialism for the rich and powerful and rugged individualism for everybody else. Don't get it twisted. Yeah, you know what? If we had socialized medicine right now, those tens of millions of people who lost their jobs would have health care. We wouldn't have tens of thousands of people dying each year because they don't have health insurance in the United States. We wouldn't have people going bankrupt from medical debt. All that would be gone. And yeah, guess what? Medicare for all can save hundreds of billions of dollars a year. Okay? Jesus Christ. Start choice here. One on the path of you got to be really junk on the Fox Kool-Aid, the freaking... You know, MAGA hat to believe this fucking malarkey. My opponent espouses, or mine, the American dream. <laughs> nice first. Mine, the American. Oh, Jesus. Mine, the American dream to become wealthy, powerful, and become a senator, and then to enrich myself and my capitalist cronies even further while leaving the working class behind, but com painting the completely opposite picture to try to trick the voters. Kelly Loeffler. I mean, Jesus fucking Christ, right? What? Folks, folks, folks. Folks, folks, folks. And so, yeah. And the whole stuff about voter fraud. Uh, the rate of mail ballots resulting in criminal convictions at point zero 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 six, and the rate of mail ballots resulting in any kind of official action point zero 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 seven percent it is more or less non-existent this whole voting fraud stealing elections fucking bullshit that loffler loffler and the republicans like to push out there it's ridiculous um and then Warnock was saying that oh, actually Loeffler voted against funding legislation that extended millions of federal funding to law enforcement. He's clearly not in favor of defunding the police as much as I would love it if he would. And again, that's putting aside the politics of if that's you know helpful or not. I obviously totally support that. Um, let's see. Fact check. Reverend Warnock does not support defunding the police, but Kelly Loeffler's voted. So look, he's he's trying to go to the right of her on this issue and say, no, I, I support funding the police for sure. She's the one who's actually tried to cut it in the past. Again, not some radical socialist, okay? He is a bread and butter neoliberal centrist. Um, let's see, let's do climate as as one example. Not going to see some type of eco-socialist Green New Deal like, you know, Howie Hawkins and the Green Party was running on as much as we need it. And I would like to see it's not the case. So, like, yeah, very Obama-Biden-esque. Rejoin the Paris Climate Accords. Build on the national commitment to fight climate change. Re work to reverse Trump's admin's attack on the environment and the EPA. Prepare Georgia's coastlines. Hold polluters and utility companies accountable. So, I mean good things but they obviously don't go nearly far enough to address the climate crisis that we are firmly in the midst of and is going to keep getting worse and worse 
jobs and economy. Let's see. I like to go down to the little bullet just to get um, listening to experts to take steps to get the coronavirus under control, including support testing, other unemployment, encouraging technical help small business and especially entrepreneurs of color women attain capital and support support pay equity for all Georgians fighting against burdensome regulations on small business fighting for a little wage but again you don't see anything about redistributing wealth or emergency UBI no nothing about progressive taxation I don't see there's something about revoking tax breaks for companies that outsource jobs, supporting main American incentives. Um, I mean, pretty decent step, but again, it does not go nearly far enough to address the systemic issues in our capitalist economy that, um, you know, the benefits, the huge vast majority go to the capitalist class while the workers get shafted again and again. I mean, come on. National Security and Defense, if he was a socialist, he would obviously be calling for anti-imperialism and dismantling our military industrial complex and using those massive amount of funds for programs of social uplift both in the United States and outside of it. Let's see if that's what he's doing. If he's a radical so well, okay. Not a whole lot here. Stands the importance of national defense. Son of a World War II vet. Yeah, and again, this is total Obama-Biden centrism, neoliberalism. He will work across the aisle to ensure that America's military remains the strongest in the world. It keeps a country and its people safe. That's not what the military does. <laughs> it's like, yeah, not some fucking radical socialist. Like Loeffler, Loeffler, Loeffler was trying to paint him as. It's just completely, completely disingenuous. And if you just spend five minutes looking at his issues page you could come to that realization it's 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 quite easy a little bit of research and you can poke through all those lies that Loeffler Loeffler all right and the last one if here's some radical if he was more of a socialist he would be supporting you know NHS style healthcare system where it's government hospitals with government funding that's not what he does. Protect, improve, and build upon the Affordable Care Act. Very Biden, Obama S. Defend protection for pre existing conditions. Provide comprehensive access to reproductive mental health services. Support legislation, lower cost of prescription drugs. Again, nothing nothing about even making health care a human right. Does it even support the floor, which should be, you know, Medicare for all? Again, not. <laughs> Not a socialist. I would love it if he was. We need more people in positions of power with that type of ideology and mindset to fight like hell to improve the working conditions, the material conditions of the working class. That's not him. Loeffler's full of shit. Leave your comments down below. Peace. Much love.